but let me announce to you next month is our month of massive angelic health did you hear that September is a month of massive angelic help. Whether you listen to me online or right here, September is your month of massive angelic help. So I'm going to teach on the ministry of angels in this one. Take it deeper. If you have not listened to my series on ministry of angels, you are missing. Massive angelic help. So today, next week, I will round off on sacrifice. Then we can kick on on massive angelic help. I don't know why to preach preaching only my body to do. It's the flow, 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 flow. Look, it just flow. It just flow, baby. Okay, quick, let me speak about Nigeria again. I spoke, I started last week, this, yesterday night into this morning, I was in a vision. And while I was in that vision, I saw, I saw Peter, I won't mention full name, so that I can, I can deny it, I can deny it that we are not the one I'm referring to. You've got that many Peter. Do you understand what I mean, right? Uh-huh. That's the secret to what I said last week on your election. So I saw Peter. Uh-huh. He's not the only Peter in Nigeria. There's, there are even Peter in this church. Uh-huh. Glory. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know me well, I speak on political issues and it doesn't mix. I saw Peter being haunted by, by, um, by armed forces, by armed forces, police or EFC or something. I saw that they came af- after him and um, all of that. All just trying to hunt him down, just making sure that does not happen. Now listen carefully. When a prophet speaks, a true prophet, when he speaks and he speaks what the Lord has said, he must also be careful about delivery. You know there was a time a prophet spoke about Hillary Clinton being winning the election in the US. You remember? Now, who won the election? Trump did not win the election. Hillary won the election with higher vote. But the United States of America counts what we call college vote. If you don't have a particular number in college vote, your, the highest number of votes you got will not mean any useless. So, because of that, because Trump had college vote where he needed to have college vote, Trump became the president. Do Hillary had numbers, higher number of votes. Did you see that? Did you see that? Good. Which means that um, if Hillary had prophetic guidance, if she had prophetic guidance, she would have known what to do for time and where to work on and what to focus on. So if I have obedient people in this place, you obedient people, stop campaigning on Twitter. On social media, start campaigning on ground. Did you hear me? Are you following me? So that you will not be disappointed. Are you hearing? Did you hear what I just said? Mm-hmm. Then, number two, in Nigeria system, that was the vision of this night, this night, to this morning. And that was what I saw. And um, also in Nigeria, there is, uh, but you need to have a percentage of vote in the south, in the north, and in the west. Am I right? Good. Lest the vote stays one side and, you, and it's not in the other side. Lest that happens. You guys should start campaigning on ground. Thank you, Jesus. I've delivered my message. Praise God. The mystery of sacrifice, part two. 
mystery of sacrifice part two I haven't taught sacrifice last week I laid foundation part two all right I haven't laid the foundation for sacrifice last week we defined what sacrifice is sacrifice on the mystery of sacrifice last week I go further today I'll be short because it should be about closing time but I've spent some time on the prophetic before we go ahead I would like to clear what um, extreme Bible teachers may use to speak against this mystery because there are Bible teachers that are extreme in their Bible explanation go to the book of Hebrews chapter number 10 from verse 5. Read everybody. The audit, everyone want to go. When he came. So, one extreme Bible teacher can look at this text. You are talking about sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Can't you see what the Bible says here? That God does not desire what? Am I right? And it's not looking like, oh, it's not looking like a you just be quiet like, I don't know. Eh. Ah. I don't know, he doesn't... Eh. He just, and you will know how to explain it. So I need to show you. Read on, verse 6. In born offering and sacrifice for sin, you had no what? The next verse made it specific. That the kind of sacrifice he does not desire is a what? It's a... Mm-mm. Back here to verse 6. Verse 6. In verse 6, in burnt offering and offerings and sacrifices for, 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 uh-huh, not sacrifices. So verse 6 explains verse 5. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you add no pleasure. The next thing you should, the next, reason, next question you should ask yourself, why did the author of Hebrew use past tense add? Why didn't he say you have no pleasure? Why did he say you had no pleasure? That means now you have pleasure in it. Uh, yeah. Did you get that? This man was quoting the book of Psalms. When David said you had no pleasure in burnt offerings and all of that. So David said you have no pleasure. He said you had no pleasure. Why? Read on. Let's see. Verse 7. Then I said, behold... I have come, and the volume of the book, it is written of me. That means it was prophesied. That's what it means. When they say the volume of the book is written of me, it means it was what? Prophesied. Don't assume. To do your will, O God. Verse 8. Previously say, it said in the past, in the Psalms, sacrifice and offering, burnt offering and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor add pleasure in them, which were offered according. Good. Then verse 9. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. When he says, I've come to do your will, what did he do? He takes away the first. What was the first? The sacrifice of sin according to the law. Did you get that? Did you get that? He didn't take away the Old Testament. Did you hear me? Because if he took away the Old Testament, the new will not be fulfilled. You didn't hear me. That's not the right way to say it. If he took away the Old Testament, the new will not happen. Because he took the prophecies of the old to make the new a manifestation. Are you following me? Because we won't have, we won't have Isaiah say, unto us a son is born and unto us a child is given. Did you hear me? Good. So he took away the first. That he may establish the word. The second. What did he establish in the second? Verse 10. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of what? Of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for what? So what is this text saying to you? It was saying to you that in the old there was an offering for sin. This offering for sin was God's idea. It wasn't man's idea. 
it was God's idea. This offering for sin fulfilled its purpose at a time in a dispensation. But God now said that was not the goal. That's not the end goal. The end goal is that I will create an offering for sin. Man always brought an offering for sin. God says one day I will bring an offering for sin for man. So God prepared the body of a man. There will be a global sacrifice, universal sacrifice for sin once and for all. So the moment that man showed up with that body, that sacrifice, God says now I have no pleasure in the ones you bring to me. Did you get it now? So I had to explain that so that when you mean Bible con artist, they won't do you like this. In the word I have no pleasure, you find in verse, verse 6 of the same Hebrew we just read, is the same word or is the opposite of the word God spoke or John said when Jesus was baptized in the book of Matthew chapter number 3 verse 17. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my what? Beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So when he say, I had no pleasure, it means I am not pleased by this. That's the opposite of it. So the moment his sacrifice showed up, he said, this is it. This is the sacrifice I've been waiting for. All the other ones pointed to it. Yes, I told you to offer it, but this is the goal. This is now my own sacrifice. Praise Jesus. Did you get that? Good. Ephesians chapter number 5 verse 6 And walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us. He gave himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. So after God said I have no pleasure in both offering, he still accepted Jesus as one friend. Are you following me? To Jesus is an offering and a sacrifice to God. There's a popular saying people say in church that God does not reject offerings. Have you heard it before? God does not reject sacrifices. Have you heard it before? Have you heard things like that before? Anything you bring to God, God will what? God will collect. God will accept. Anything you bring to God, God will accept. Am I right? He's not the God of the Bible. Is a God in your village. It's not true. I remember those days when we were growing up. They say, when you don't have offering, if you don't have anything, even if it's five naira you have, add dance to it. Then you dance, 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 dance. When you see people dancing to the offering bowl, the one that dance the most, they are likely the one without every offering. It's a joke. Then we began to write songs that says, if, when I don't have offering to give, my dance will become my what? Offering. There's songs in my language like that. But that's not the truth of the Bible. And like I told you last week, the reason people don't understand or don't want to even engage the mystery of sacrifice is because most of the time when they sacrifice, they didn't see anything. There was no result. And the problem is usually not the altar. The problem is the protocol of sacrifice. We don't know many times how to offer sacrifices to God. In Malachi chapter number 1 verse 6 to 8, God was speaking. He says, a son honors the father and a servant his master. Then where is my honor? You dishonor me in your sacrifices. Jump to verse 8. He says, the sacrifices you give to me, can you give, can you give it to your governor to verse, or your president? Verse 8. Look at it. And when you offer the blind, the blind, blind calves, blind goat, that's what he's saying, a sacrifice, is it not evil? God is calling sacrifice evil. And when you offer lame, you know they are lame goats, the way they are lame men. When you offer lame rams and the sick ones, you say, this, 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 this my goat is about to die. You would, this ram is about to die. It will affect others. It will affect others. Let me take this one and sacrifice to God. God says, is it not evil when you offer me lame and sick? God says, go and offer it to your governor. Offer it then to your governor. You see conversation. You see how God is talking. 
So go and offer it to Buari and see if we accept it. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord? So God is saying that your sacrifice can compel favor from me. You offer to me what you cannot offer to your governor. And you say the God of the Bible is not alive. I don't understand. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Because we have turned the God of the Bible to the one that you just come and just do, give whatever you like. This is what I want to. This is what. But if the governor of your city says, I'm visiting your house, you won't offer the same thing. The God of the Bible rejects sacrifice. There are times. It is in his nature to reject sacrifices. He doesn't accept all kinds of sacrifices. Don't let anyone lie to you. He says, honor the Lord with your substance, not your leftover. That's what the Bible says. Honor the Lord with your substance. Not in honor God like your substance. When Jesus was born, the, the wise men, not three of them, we only know of three gifts. Don't say three wise men. They brought three gifts. The wise men that came to Jesus, the Bible says they opened their treasure box, not their trash bin. Treasure box, that's what they opened. Not trash can. Sacrifice to God must be valuable. Last week we defined sacrifice. And we looked at few things to define sacrifice. We looked like Abel's first and fattest offering. We looked at Abraham's um, response. So God's command in that Abraham did not withhold. God used that word about two or three times. Did not withhold what God asked for. We looked at, we looked at the fact that when Abraham was going to offer his son, Abraham said to his servant that they were going to what? To worship. And that's the first definition of worship in the Bible. We look at John 10, 17. That Jesus said that he laid down his life as sacrifice. And this is why my father loved me. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. So from that, we define what sacrifice is. So what is sacrifice? Who can remember? Who remembers? What is sacrifice? Talk to me. It's your neighbor. Tell your neighbor what is sacrifice. So what is sacrifice? You have forgotten? So a sacri sacrifice is a laid down life. Sacrifice is a laid down life that does not withhold is only the first and the best of whatever he has in obedience to God. Sacrifice is a laid down life. Jesus said, I laid down my life. That does not withhold his first. Abel gave his first, his best. He gave his best of whatever God whatever God asks of him or whatever in obedience to God so I told you last week to surrender is not sacrifice surrendering is what men of sacrifice do praise Jesus see first Peter chapter number 2 verse 5 let me show you that sacrifice is a New Testament revelation I'm trying to put balance to it because of the kind of people that live in this time and age. If you just teach anyhow, you, and they will listen to yourself and say, no, 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 this man is wrong. This is Old Testament that he's showing you. See, 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse 5. Read for me, everyone. One to go. And you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. Glory to Jesus. A holy one. All right, to what? To offer what? Sacrifices accepted to God through who? Jesus Christ. What started? What, what's the first word in the text? You also. You, you, you. Paul was writing to the Peter was writing to his church. You also. You also. He says, You are a living stone. Glory to God. You are being built up a spiritual. I'm a spiritual that has been built up. I'm being built up by what my pastor teaches me every day. If you are eating the right meal, actually. Been built up. He says, that's not all. You are also a holy priesthood. And what's your job? To offer up sacrifices. Now listen carefully. If you had said to offer up spiritual sacrifice, I would assume that sacrifice is just prayer. Because the word that preceded that is what? Priesthood. And I said the major work of a priest is to offer prayer. However, it didn't say sacrifice. It said what? Sacrifices. Plural. So I have a call to 
to offer up different kinds of sacrifice to God. That's why Romans 12, 1 says, ask me to present my body. Present my body, a living sacrifice. Which means sacrifice can be dead. A living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Let me give you a list of, of uh, let, me give you, let me do a list of protocols of sacrifice, or the protocol of sacrifice. What's the protocol of sacrifice? Number one, protocol means what I must do, step by step, what we must check. Let's do it, sacrifice checklist. Let's do it, sacrifice checklist, quickly. Sacrifice checklist. Number one on sacrifice checklist, Psalm chapter number 50, verse 9. The, the, the offerer, the man offering sacrifice to God must offer willingly. Look at what God said. He says, I would not take a bull from your house, nor goat from out of your folds. God says, I'm not the kind of God that comes to your backyard to steal ram or to steal goat. No, I won't do it. So if you're going to offer me anything, you must offer it what? Willingly. That's what. Take note. Number two, the second protocol of sacrifice is an understanding that the offerer must sustain. The offerer must know, must understand and believe that God does not need his sacrifice. Listen carefully to me. Anytime you offer to God, thinking he needs it, that sacrifice was not accepted. I want to give to God. I know God's, God, need, God needs this money. The God that God's out needs. No, don't ever. Even when you see obvious need in the house of God and you want to give to it, don't ever let the posture of your heart be that you are trying to help God to meet his need. You'll be in hell. I'll show you. There was always a Bible verse to explain it or verses to explain it. Do verse 9. Let's do verse 10, 9 again. Verse 9 again. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your folds. Verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine. I like my God. Look at the way he talks. I talk like him. And they say I boast. I'm not boast. I'm talking like my father. And a cattle on a thousand hills. Every beast is mine. I know all the birds on the mountains. And the wild beasts of the field are what? Are mine. If I were hungry like the God in your village, I will not tell you, for the world is mine and its fullness thereof. I don't need you to send money for yam festival. What you concern me with yam festival? I own the yams. The God you send money to, he's not God. <laughs> Did you see that? I own it all. So I'm not the God that comes to your back and says, Ah, I need ram. Oh. Hey, Kelechi has like 10 ram here. Yeah. Make I just stick, steal one. Ah. All the ones you have, he gave you. I told them in Abuja yesterday, I said, listen to me. I said, if God wants to drink your blood, he will drink it without permission. <laughs> Hello? He will suck your blood without permission. It will even ask you. It will just put us. After you just be dizzy. Dizzy. You are dizzy. Now you go to the hospital. They say ah, your PC, PCV is low. It's now 20 something or, or 3%. They, say they will not give you blood. You will buy blood. You buy like three pints of blood. As we take and finish, it will go up. By the time you get home in the night, it will just come again. <laughs> it will suck it without permission. Who are thou? Who? You know the good thing about God is that as he's sucking it, as he's sucking it without permission, one fake prophet will see a vision that is witches and wizards sucking it. So you'll be praying, every witch and wizard sucking my blood. Die, die. God will be laughing. Now me, they suck her more. <laughs> ah, God is God. He does not need it. You must get that part. Don't ever think you are helping the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are helping the man of God when you give a sacrifice to him or to God. No. 
don't ever. Don't ever. And when you give sacrifice, don't pity yourself. <laughs> Did you hear me? Don't pity yourself. I remember many years ago, still young, I was still a pastor at Dexter then. I was still a pastor at Dexter. I, I had just one car, and the Lord told me to go give this car to a friend of um, Archbishop. I had a mentor then. He was a close, one of the closest friends of Archbishop. So I loved going to him. He would tell me stories, things he knows he knew about Archbishop and all the things they did together. So I loved going to him. So one day as I was going, as I got there, the Lord said, drop this in your car. Don't take it back home. I said, hey. So I told him. I said, the Lord said, I should drop this car as a sacrifice. He said, oh, oh, then how will you go back home now? Why not go home, take it home, then send somebody? Because at that level, I wasn't taking taxi. I was right up there. I wasn't taking taxi or buses or all of that. And there was no boat or Uber. Do you get? So, talking way back to around six or seven. So, he said to me, why not take it home? And when you get home, you get somebody or your driver to bring it back. I said, don't pity me. The instruction is not, he said, drop it, don't go back home with the car. That was what he said. He didn't say, drive the car home, then give the car. No. He didn't say that. And he took the car. He spoke words. And he took me to his vision board. And I saw the car exactly on the board. He didn't get it. <laughs> I saw that car, same brand, same color exactly on the board on his wall I went wow how God answers so specifics now when the moment that happened I was not feeling like hey God can't use me use my own car give this man this the kind one no that didn't come to my heart I would have destroyed my sacrifice I would have I began to jump up and I was leaping you know why I, you know why I was leaping I also had the black Mercedes Benz in my own vision board at home. Ah, yeah, he didn't get it. <laughs> I had a black Mercedes in, on my own vision board at home. So, you know what? I said, no wonder. God, God was actually ready to bring my Mercedes. So that was why I said, let this go. And if he answered this to specific, my Mercedes will come to specific. Two weeks later, three Mercedes came. Same brand. Three. About two or three weeks later. I can't remember very well. But less than a month. I'm very sure it was less than a month. Okay. And between that time the Mercedes came, somebody brought me a car. I said, take this car. I said, I don't want. I said, I don't want. He said, why? I said, that is not what is on my body. <laughs> this is not the answer to my prayer. That's brass. Thank you. This is not the answer. This is brass. It's not the answer. I said, I don't want. I said, no, I don't want. If you really want to give me the car, go and say the car, bring the money. I don't want that car, I will not take it. Because God answers to what? To specifics. Glory to Jesus. I'm teaching you the things my hands have touched. I've used and I've practiced. The protocol to sacrifice is that you must understand that God does not need your sacrifice. Don't pity yourself when you offer sacrifices to God. Should I stop there? Should I stop there? I'll do one more today. Then I'll continue next week. The next protocol of sacrifice is that sacrifice must cost you everything, not something. In that area, it must cost you everything. Or cost you a law. You have two cars, you have a Mercedes Benz and you have a Peugeot. I said, the Lord, I should sacrifice a car. You now give a Peugeot. I said, man of God, the Lord, I should help you with the car. You should stop taking a bike. Say Peugeot. And you now keep the Mercedes Benz for yourself. You didn't, that was not sacrifice. That was an offering. Sacrifice must cost you everything. It costs a lot. And I'm telling you ahead. It costs a lot. And that's why sacrifice is not what we do all the time. <laughs> it costs a lot. 
There was a time a plague hit Israel. The, the, the prophet, the, the king went to the prophet. David went to the prophet. What shall we do? Plague in Israel. The prophet looked at him and said, this plague will destroy the whole Israel. The answer to this plague is not fasting and prayer. He said, the answer to this plague is to offer a sacrifice. David was looking for an altar. David was looking for an altar to where to offer sacrifice. He, couldn't, he didn't have one. And finally, David heard that a man had an altar that he could, he could use for sacrifice. He could buy it for sacrifice. Because they said, they said where altars are made. So the, um, David went to, went to this man called Arana. Second Samuel 24, 24. He got to Arana and told him, I need altar for sacrifice. He said, oh, you are king. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. The way some of you tell, ah, they say we should offer sacrifice. Or you, I want to offer a sacrifice to God. Then you go and meet your mommy. Mommy, give me, give me money. I want to offer sacrifice. No, that's not sacrifice. It must cost you. If David did not pay for that altar, David would not have been the offerer. A runner would have been the offerer. So David said, verse 24, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord, my God, with that which costs me what? Nothing. If it does not cost you, it is not sacrifice. It is the cost that makes it sacrifice. It's the cost. Now, understand also that cost varies. What costs me may not be what costs you. I remember a time in my life, in my family, where ah, we were sowing seeds, offering sacrifices like, like, um, I don't know what to say. I don't know the life what to use. Like fools. Fools in the high of the world. My wife will always say, this poverty will get out of it by sacrifice. And we kept doing it. Every goddamn thing we have, there was time. Everything. And I would sometimes have to travel to Nigeria. Am I right? To come and offer it. My dear, don't doubt the altar of sacrifice. Don't confuse sacrifice with seed sowing. See, the Bible says in Psalms, that those that sow in tears will reap in what? We reap in joy, bringing their sheaves with them in their hand. See, when you sow and you are still crying, they see tears or cry. It's not sacrifice. Have you offered and you are just looking like a dummy, like cry, you cannot cry. Laugh, you cannot laugh. You are just looking like Huh? Like, have I been defrauded? I remember many years ago to my father told me, he said, Are you ready to do lots of your fire sacrifice? I said, What is it? He said, Everything in your house. Many years ago to you happened to me before I got married. I offered everything. My assistant pastor came to my house. I usually give him the key to my house. My son pastor then, when I was in Desta. I usually give him the key to my house. He went to my house. He got there. He said, ah! He sat and he was crying. He said, wow, wow. How? Jesus. He went everywhere. I used to have a saxophone in my house. That was one of my interior decor. I had, I had keyboard. My, let's not talk about the way my house is to look. <laughs> I used to have a grand piano in my house. Then a saxophone and all of that. Everything was gone. Everything was gone. The guy entered and was crying. He sat down. I sent him air. The guy sat down there crying. I called him, called him on phone. He was not picking his call. So I drove home. Daniel, what happened to you now? Oh, he said, Papa, I don't understand. How, how did it happen? What happened to your security man? He was crying. He said, I said, Papa, they have stolen everything you have. <laughs> you have been robbed. I said, me, who robbed me? Well, I'm funny. Nobody robbed me. Say, Papa, see. <laughs> so 
So when they entered, I just see, I said, oh. I said, I, I sold everything. I gave everything out yes. Every garden. To my bed frame. To everything. To my internet dish. Then I had one big internet dish. Because I was working online. Everything. What is it? He said, how? He didn't understand. He said, ah. Sir, are you normal? I said, I'm very fine. Don't confuse seeds with sacrifice. <laughs> when you are still sowing in tears, it's, 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 they are painful seeds. It's not sacrifice yet. When you sacrifice, you'll be looking like... They will ask you a question, you won't have answer. I said, my won't here. You know why? A seed... The Bible says, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. But when it dies, it bringeth forth what? Much. It means that the principle of the seed is that it must first rot for him to give you an harvest. Seed must first rot him for him to give you an harvest. Anytime your sacrifice rot him, it was not accepted. I told you last week, remember? Sacrifices don't rot. It's either they are consumed by fire or they disappear. So when you see your seed rotting, that was not right, that was seed. It seeds are rot first before it becomes an harvest. Sacrifices don't rot. They are consumed by fire or they disappear. They don't rot. And that is why the speed at which sacrifices answer and bring change is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Now I'm saying these things. I know Gen Gen Z. What's your generation called? Gen Z. I know most of these things you don't understand it. And pastors are afraid to teach it. Those are taught it, do not teach it with balance. But it's the truth of God's word. Sacrifices are not the same. They are not the same. So so no, there's seed faith. There's a mixture of seed faith. I thought it before. It works, but there's a difference between seed faith and sacrifice. Don't confuse it. Sacrifice will cost you everything. It will cost you everything. There are things seed sowing cannot do that only sacrifice can do. There are things prayer cannot do that only sacrifice can do or seed sowing can do. I hope you know. Who combed your head today? Was it prayer that combed it? Was it prayer that combed your head? Lafrina Kuzi had abaya. Your hair was combed. A giga suta higher. Then you started driving your car. Then your car started driving. No. There are things prayer cannot do. Get it done. There are things confession of the word cannot do. It's truth. I tell you the truth. There are things cannot do. There are things that only have answers to sacrifice. I think the only answer to that. The king of Moab was at war. God's people went to the prophet before they went to battle. Prophet, what should we do? Elijah, what should we do? He said, this is what you should do. Go to battle. Like this, like this. Offer to God. They offered sacrifice to God. And they went to battle. And they were winning. And they were winning. By chance, I don't know where that man learned the mystery from. Mesha or Misha, the king of Moab, he saw it that he was losing in battle and he was not ready to go back into slavery because Israel was about to enslave him and his nation. The man looked at his crown prince and offered it to God as sacrifice and gained him on the fence. Israel saw it. The whole, the whole nation saw it. The moment Israel saw it, I knew Israel was afraid already. Because Israel offered ram and goat. The man offered his son. Sacrifice has weight. They are weightier than the other. The Bible says that the wrath of God turned on Israel. God, God calmed down. 
How dare you? I told you I was going to, nation, to, to, to a battle. You told me to go that I will win. Then suddenly, you change my, my, your mind. Why did you do that? You know the answer will be, I didn't change my mind. I see desire that you win. But there are things that desire cannot change. It's principles, mysteries that determines the outcome. It's mysteries. So whether you fight it or not, you like it or not, you argue with it, you do your synthesis against it, whatever you in the end, it is mystery that will win. You know the way God has organized the world. God hears every prayer. But if you ever think that God is sitting down listening to all of your prayer every day, you are, there's something wrong with you. There's a principle that he has created that makes everything work. He listens to your prayer by a principle. He answers them by a principle. Are you following me? He receives your sacrifice by a principle. He receives your offering by a principle. Everything on earth has been embedded into a system backed by a principle. And principles don't check color. You say, who is, who is offering the sacrifice? Where did she see last night in the, in the motel, have you? No. They don't check. If principles are aligned with, outcome will change. So when Israel was fighting at war, God did not see that it was Israel anymore. No. It's the realm of the spirit just responded to what was on the altar. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for you that this mystery will change your life. It will transform it. In the name of Jesus. I say it will transform it. In the name of Jesus. I say it will transform it. In the name of Jesus. I'm putting mysteries in your hand like a soldier. Like weapons. The way to reign here is to have mysteries. As, see, you know when I tell people that I cannot be stranded, they think, I don't know how you feel when I say it. I don't know what is in your mind. What, what is on your mind when I say I can't be stranded? When you hear things missing, things like that. Who can tell? What's in your mind when I say things like that? What is your mind? Who can tell me now? Just tell me. I, I won't judge you for whatever. Huh? Is that positive confession? <laughs> Not me and you. Huh? I know what to do to get what I want to get. I know it's like I know it like I know my name. Like like I know like I know Eba. I know it. It's not. I'm not doing positive confession. I pass those. Things. I don't even do confession. Which confession? I don't do positive confession. For what? No, I don't do that. I confess God's word. I read God's word. I say God's word. But that's not that's not why I say that. But I've surrounded myself with mysteries like arsenals. You know when you enter, when you see Terminator and you see a gun, you see a AK-47, you see a silent shooter, then you see an axe, then you see this, then you see then you see the shooter, then you see the one that they used to stop. You see all kinds of weapons. Like wow, this is lovely. He said, I shoot or I throw it or I release a grenade or I shoot a missile. I've surrounded myself with mysteries like that. Let me give you a testimony. It's a good testimony, but the testimony, would have, I don't know why God doesn't allow that testimony to come directly to me. Abuja Church, there's a woman there that is dead to me. Met her recently. She flew she told me her friend was sick. Then she flew her brother to go see the friend. So when her brother to go see the friend, when she got to the friend's place in the UK, uh, she said she was going to call me and pray. Before she got there, she sent me, I think, sent me about 300,000 there and said, please be available. I'll be there by this time. So I, I took that like an honor seed and all of that. So she got there and she called me. And I prayed for the woman on the phone. I said, touch your friend. This, the woman has been in, on the machine. I said, they had tumor in the brain, something, something, all kinds of things that she's going to die. If they remove the machine, she will die in a few minutes. So I prayed over the phone. I asked her to touch her. She did. 
after I finish praying. So I said, thank you, Bishop, and the, the sisters, the lady, the sick lady's younger sister or something, was also thanking me on phone. Thank you so much. God replenish your anointing, as if it is going down, and uh, all kinds of, and they said all kinds of things. But I, I was like, wait, wait. As I was saying wait, wait, they were not hearing wait. They were just saying thank. I said, calm down. Ah. I said, that woman would die in seven days. He said, huh? I said, we thought it without a mansion. She would die in seven days. He said, ah. So they, they thank you disappeared. So they calm down. I said, me, when I pray for people, if it is done, I know. If it is not done, I know. They asked me what happened. I said, give me time. I will come back. Call me in about 30 minutes, one hour. So I asked people, to, everyone to leave my office. And I just stayed alone. As I began to gaze, I saw that a baby was slaughtered, was killed in a name. One way they kill in the realm of the spirit. They use animals, they use human, they use babies. So if you want to kill um, Dolakpa, for example, you put, you mention Dolakpa's name on that baby, then you slaughter the baby. The way the baby dies is the way Dolakpa will die. How long? Or the hand, or animals and all of that. So this one, they didn't even use ram or animal. They use human. And they, they kill us. I said, I said, that woman is dead in the realm of spirit. All those same doctors are telling you, it's just a um, physical reaction. Whew. So they told me, what can be done? I said, I don't, it's still possible. Let's see. Give me time. Give me time and I called back. I said, this one, we need to talk to the husband and the first child. Now, in the family, the lady is a rich one. The husband is doing fine, but really is a heavy woman. So the Lord told me to tell them that there's a trust fund that's been kept for their, is their trust fund, is their family trust fund. Like, is like what they, where their confidence is in the area of wealth. And for school, the husband is about to contest for gubernatorial office. And all of that. That's the money they are going to release to sponsor the gubernatorial election in Nigeria and all of that. And Lord told me to tell them to give it to a ministry in Pakistan. I said, why not Irene? <laughs> what kind of God is this one? Huh? Now the ministry the Lord told me, I never knew the ministry. I just heard the name. And they began to make search. I said, this is what I saw. The logo of the ministry looks like this and that. And they begin to search. Finally, they found it. They saw, and they said to me, this is what we saw. I said, yeah, that is it. Now, that ministry they gave me to in Pakistan, they do crusade five, I think every day, almost five, five or six times a week in Pakistan. And they spend about $50,000 every day for crusades. That ministry. Because in Pakistan, if you're doing a crusade in a Keja, the people come to the crusade in a Keja, they, are, they don't live in a Keja or Jota or Omba. The people come for crusade in Keja will live in Badagri. Because the moment you put banner up for crusade in Geja, the rebels in that area will come and destroy you, kill you, and deal with all of you at the crusade ground. So the community will never know that the crusade is about to happen. They will just see light and everything. There will be no banner. So the moment the crusade starts that night, before they gather themselves and say, let's go and attack them, the crusade is done. Souls are won. So they have to move people from far, but agree, Far, maybe inside of Kurodu and all of that. That's how they do in different areas. So, if you want to do crusade for people in Ikeja, you want to win souls in Ikeja, you will take their crusade to Ekbe. You will not get bosses to move them. That's how bad it is to preach the gospel there. I didn't know all of that until. So, we began to talk, okay, tell us about the ministry. What do you do? And the Lord told them to release that money in millions. That's all their trust fund millions of dollars. And they did. The husband did. Well, that means he can't contest for election again this year because he needs about five billion naira to win election. And the son said, we want our mommy alive. If that will do it. I said, I hope it will do it. He said, Bishop, don't hope. <laughs> if it is hope, we don't. Hope can. Open on millions of dollars. Well, more than five billion. If I tell you naira, you keep quiet. More than over 10 billion. Two days later, the woman removed the machine by herself. 
two days two days later she removed it so she's alive but she's broke sacrifice don't despise the altar of sacrifice I wish 10% of the money came to Irene Lord Jesus will buy up somewhere in the Kedja like oh Lord Jesus Lord next time you are giving me this word it must be Irene Somebody saying, Papa, why didn't you change it? Why you just tell him, why would they know? <laughs> That's what Emmanuel is thinking. <laughs> Papa, why didn't you? You should have just told them it's Irene now. The money will say, Come. Ah. <laughs> you want them to come and arrest me if the woman dies. <laughs> no, I will always say what the Lord has said. There's an altar called the altar of sacrifice. It works, it speaks like fire. The problem people don't get the result is because what they offer is not sacrifice. Yeah, I offer your own, your woman salary. That's not sacrifice. No? Woman salary. Yeah. SD, yeah, offer the money your wallet. Hey, my money, <laughs> Papa. Oh, what is money? Ah, uh, that's not sacrifice, bro. That's the seed. Those are seeds. Mm. When you see sacrifice, you will know. Abraham could not cry when he was going to offer Isaac. Cry again. We'll just be looking. <laughs> Father, where are we going? Where are we going? Follow me. Just, just be following me. <laughs> just be following me. What are you talking? Cry. Oh. Cry. You go say offer all your animals, then you can be crying. You should be there, all my animals. Say offer your son, the only son. Cry. How come I won't? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know that look. But there's grace for sacrifice. There's grace. That gets a man to that point where he does not think. There's grace. There's grace for it. It's a mystery in the spirit. People have abused it. People don't teach it accurately. It's not sacrifice, it's not a way to enrich a church. Or to enrich a man of God. No. No, it's not. Stand to your feet. I receive grace for sacrifice in the name of Jesus. Ladash Anabandabada Liku Sataya Nikonde. I receive grace for sacrifice. Grace for it. My life ceases to be ordinary in the name of Jesus. My life ceases to be ordinary. It ceases to be ordinary. My life ceases to be ordinary. I receive grace for a life of sacrifice. I receive grace. I am no kusatayadish the higher. I'm not one of them that hold back. I'm not of the tribe that hold back. No. These things they talk about will not be stories to me. I will engage it. Yede shana na kuzaya, he did not. Open your mouth. I receive grace. Open your mouth. I receive grace. Your mouth controls your destiny. Speak it into your life. I receive grace for sacrifice. Ye go shadabaya. I receive grace for sacrifice. I receive grace, 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 grace. Grace for a sacrificial life. Grace to offer whatever, whatever, all of it, anytime. Grace to offer all of it. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Say with me, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
every stronghold that is a result of wrong teaching in the area of sacrifice injuring me from offering sacrifices is broken now every stronghold is pulled down in the name of Jesus Kaya Kosh Sanabana Bana Bahaya Kondaha Teta 